Hello YouTube! This is going to be another stick trick tutorial video. This week's trick is going to be what a lot of people call dribbling the stick. And basically what that is, is where you take one of your hands and you basically bounce the stick while the stick rests on the fulcrum of the other hand. And of course this can be slow and high strokes. It can be fast and low strokes any combination. So, now that we know what the trick is, let's go into detail and explain how it's done. Now this trick isn't really difficult to understand necessarily how it's done, but there are a couple things that if you don't know can make the trick harder to execute. And there are some things that if you do know can make the trick easier to execute. So the first thing that you need to know is that the fulcrum doesn't have to be stable. A lot of people think that the fulcrum has to be really tight and rigid, and if not, you know, you'll lose control of the stick and it'll just kind of flop all over the place. But in reality, if you'll see my hand is wide open, and the stick can kind of like roll all over the place, and for the most part, I can still keep control of it. Um, so the fulcrum doesn't have to be super tight. That is a common mistake. A lot of people close the fulcrum too much and restrict the movement of the stick. Think of it like a seesaw. The hinges on the seesaw aren't necessarily like screwed super tight because then the seesaw wouldn't be able to move. It'd just be like gonk or gonk. It'd just be kind of stuck there. It has to be able to be loose and move freely. So you need to make sure you don't lose control of the stick, but at the same time, it doesn't have to be a tight fulcrum. The second thing to know is that moving the fulcrum point higher or lower in relation to the stick angle to the drum pad can directly affect how you're able to control it. Notice, the lower I have the stick to being at pretty much a flat angle, the easier it is to bounce the stick and get very good leverage. The higher I raise it, it starts to die out. So you'll notice, especially with the big open strokes, the stick dies very quickly when I start to raise the angle and make it steeper. So, make sure that whenever you're moving the fulcrum, or even if you're just keeping the fulcrum still, the lower you keep it to being flat, the better control you will have over the stick. Another thing that's really useful is know that you can play the stick wherever you like. You can play it on the tip, you can play it in the middle, you can play close to the fulcrum. I would recommend playing it in the middle. So, let's just take the traditional grip for example. If we kind of split this into thirds, like this, here's where my fulcrum is, and I'm playing it at about where the two-thirds mark would be. This gives me a good amount of leverage and a good amount of weight. Obviously, playing it at the tip would give you the best amount of leverage, but there's so much weight back here that it's hard to control. If I play too much towards the back, I get very little control, but I have a lot of weight. The stick seems very heavy. So playing it right here at about the two-thirds position, or three-fourths position, um, can give you a lot of control over the stick. So now let's discuss how to move the stick from our regular traditional grip position into other positions. And all that is is transferring the fulcrum, or the balance point, from one place to another. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn a little trick that a lot of people like to do. It's moving the stick from the fulcrum point of the traditional to each of the gaps in between your four fingers. So it's basically like you're taking it from the thumb gap to the three finger gaps and then back to the thumb gap. Now remember, when you move the fulcrum, the most important thing is make sure you have control of the stick. And again, to maintain control of the stick, we don't raise the fulcrum point of the angle and we don't dribble the stick too low or too high. You want to keep a nice medium dribble. The lower the stick is to the pad, the harder it is to keep it alive, just like bouncing a basketball. When you're bouncing the basketball at, let's say, waist height, it's easier to control than if it's down by you know, your knees or if you're bouncing it up by your head. The same thing applies when we're bouncing the stick. So again, keeping my fulcrum nice and low, all I'm going to do is use kind of a rolling motion because I don't want it to be abrupt, you know, I don't want to go coo, 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 you know, switch the fingers around. It's going to be nice, smooth, kind of a rolling motion, but it is going to be quick.
and there you go. So again, all I'm doing is when I'm bouncing the stick, I'm rolling my hand underneath, and especially when it's on the way back up, my hand goes underneath, or it comes from underneath and goes out. Here's how it looks from the side. Notice I'm keeping my fingers widespread and I'm using kind of that rolling motion to get in and out of each gap. You may have noticed that I was adjusting the fulcrum slightly whenever I was doing that. Basically, all I was doing was relaxing my hand and mid-tap sliding my hand. But basically what you can do is, by keeping your hand relaxed and sliding the fulcrum, you can move your hand from a bad position and quickly correct to a good position. A common reason the stick dies is because the fulcrum is too far back or because the fulcrum is too far forward. So relaxing your hand will allow you to slide from fulcrum point that is bad or too far back or too far forward into a good fulcrum point. So you'll notice if I switch from one finger, let's just say I'm going from this gap to this gap, I end up too far back, all I have to do is quickly slide my hand forward and again, that comes from being relaxed. If I'm tight, nothing happens, but if I'm relaxed, I can quickly slide my hand forward and account for the mistake. Let's talk about some other places where you can use this trick or where else you can move the fulcrum. Once you understand how to move it in between your fingers, which is arguably one of the harder things to do, you can do this on anything that has a balance point. I've seen people balance it on their nose. Now, of course, you have to be able to move. You know, you can't be sitting here and just kind of do that. You know, you'd have to be able to kneel down next to the drum, blah, blah, blah. I've seen people balance it on their shoe, like this. Or your ankle, really. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can balance it on your arm like this. But one of the main places that is important to be able to balance the stick is in the match grip. Either with the thumb and the first finger or in between the first finger and the middle finger. So here's a way to transition from holding it in traditional grip to holding it in match grip like I just did. What you're going to do is start out in traditional grip, bounce the stick, and what you're going to do is you're going to curl your first two fingers around, grab the stick, create a new fulcrum point, and then bring your thumb out from underneath. Now all you have to do is roll your hand, and now you're in match grip. This also works in getting back into traditional grip. So let's say you're doing it in match grip, switch to this fulcrum, wrap it underneath, and pull it back down. Another application that you can use if you're playing this on a real drum is that you can switch from the traditional grip to the match grip using the technique I just showed you and then take the stick in the match grip and just place it on the rim and continue to bounce. Whenever you're done, pick the stick up and keep on going. Now let's say the stick is about to die. What's one thing that you can do to save it if you're in front of a live audience? Well, the easiest thing to do is if the stick is about to die Quickly grab it, do a rim shot on the butt end of the stick, and flip to the match grip. That's probably the easiest way. So let's say you're dribbling, the stick's about to die, grab it, rim shot, and you're back. Probably grabbing it and saving it with a rim shot not only looks impressive, but it completely negates the fact that you're about to fail on your trick. Now, of course, the other stick can be underneath your armpit, can be in your mouth. <laughs> and take this in your traditional hand. And that's one way that you can get in and out of this trick. I wouldn't recommend necessarily holding it in your armpit because it does make it difficult to kind of weave in and out with your fingers, which is what most people use this dribbling technique for. But, you know, typically you don't want to have something stuck in your armpit when you're required to be relaxed and be able to move your arm having something stuck there can make you tense. So I wouldn't recommend that. Try putting your stick on, you know, maybe the rim. If you have like a, a stick bag next to your snare drum, like a marching snare, just slide it in the bag. You know, you can put it in your mouth, like I said earlier. Um, you can put it in your shirt, like that. Whatever you want, you know. Put it in your ear, like you're a 
like you're an artist maybe. You know, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, but putting it in your armpit is probably the easiest thing to do. You can also put it in this armpit. That's actually not that bad. Um, so if you're, you know, stressed for space, you know, you can do things like that. But basically, find something that works for you. So that's how you do the trick. If you have any questions, feel free to post a comment below, and I'll be glad to answer them for you. And once again, if you like this video, please check out my channel, or at least check out some of my other uh, drumming exercises or stick tricks. I have a playlist um, called Drumming Lessons, and it should be posted next to this video. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.